You know, one of the things that kind of grinds my gears a little bit, but in turn is a compliment at the same time, is when people accuse me of playing and recording NHL 20 on rookie difficulty. Now, I'm a guy who has been playing this franchise for 10 years, so I kinda know my way around it. But, the fact is, every gameplay that is not played against other people on this YouTube channel is on Superstar Difficulty. There's no rookie going on when you see me pot 10 goals a game, it's just because I can pot 10 goals a game on the computer against Superstar. But, a lot of that does have to do with the teams as well, because if you're playing with a stacked team, it is easier to score goals than when you're playing with a non-stacked team. That's kind of why, while you're doing GM mode, there are certain strategies that you can use to pull off some trades, maneuvers, etc. to get yourself a good roster for cheap. It's what I did with my Canucks season. It's why we have Marner, McDavid, Matthews, Hughes, 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 Pedersen, and Besser all on the team at the same time, despite all of them being elite or franchise players. And this is a strategy that, according to Elliot Friedman, might actually be involved with the Red Wings and the Lightning, according to his own personal belief. So, taking a look at the most recent episode of the 31 Thoughts podcast, Friedman was talking about the Tampa Bay Lightning. Now, we've spoken at length about the Lightning before. They're a team that only has about $5 million of cap space. But, they're a team that has three quite notable RFAs to re-sign to contracts. They are Mikhail Sergachev, left-handed D, he's 22 years old. You have Eric Chernak, a left-handed D, he is 23 years old. And you have Anthony Sorelli, a very underrated two-way center, 23 years old here. He's a guy who honestly could become a Selkie candidate one day, and his young career has been off to a very hot start, already getting himself a Stanley Cup. In fact, the same could be said for all of these other two guys as well. But the Lightning don't really have all too much money to shell out for these players, which is why the idea of an offer sheet for Sergachev, for Sorelli, and even for Cernak has come up in different fan bases across the NHL and their media sphere. So, this is what Friedman says in regards to the Lightning, their RFA situation, and the Detroit Red Wings on the most recent 31 Thoughts podcast episode. He says that people are convinced Julien Brisebois could trade one of the Lightning's RFAs to Detroit with a sweetener. Detroit would sign them, and then, a few months later, would trade the player back to the Lightning at a reduced rate with salary retained. Yeah, you know how I build my stacked NHL GM modes and franchise mode? You take a player, he's very expensive, you trade him away to another team, and you say, okay, we're gonna take a whole bunch of stuff back, like, my Elias Pettersson has been traded about 20 times so far in my season mode, but he's only played for Vancouver because we're always trading back for him, using a franchise goalie we drafted in the third round as a sweetener, and we take him back at 50% salary retained. That's kind of the get-rich-quick, technically not really cheating, but sorta is cheating kind of way to build a very stacked franchise mode team. But it's a strategy that I have been growing up using and believing, yeah, no, this is just a video game thing. Like, there's no way this would actually happen in real life. Right? Well, here's a little bit of a connection over here first and foremost, because in order for something like this to happen, what the Red Wings would essentially be doing is straight up just helping out the Lightning. There's no ifs, ands, and buts about it. You're doing this to benefit not only your team by acquiring assets, but the Tampa Bay Lightning as well. You're doing them a favor. And for the most part, I honestly think that it makes sense here because obviously Steve Eiserman, former Lightning guy, he was the guy who kind of built this team. Julien Brisebois kind of added the finishing touches with Barclay, Goodrow, Blake Coleman, etc. But the real bread and butter in acquiring a lot of this stuff happened before that. So if there's any team out there that Julian Brisebois can go to and say, hey, if we trade you Mikhail Sergachev and we include a draft pick, would you be able to re-sign him and send him back to us for salary retained for even more stuff? How does that sound, Stevie Y? 
And because Steve Iserman of the Red Wings doesn't really care that this is a move that helps out the Lightning because, hey, the Iserman team, they want their own team to benefit in this situation, then, hey, okay, give us a draft pick. We don't really care if a move like this makes you guys even more stacked for the next three or four years because that's not even our timeline of success anyway. We're supposed to be bad for the next few years. So if the Lightning are giving us a deal where we benefit long term and they benefit short term, then it's okay. It's also kind of why other teams in the NHL most likely would absolutely not touch this idea. You think the Boston Bruins are going to help out the Lightning this way? I know they're a team that doesn't have as much cap space as the Red Wings do, which is why the Red Wings are one of these teams being discussed, but the point remains. A team like Boston would absolutely throw up at the idea of helping out the Lightning, especially when it comes to their money situation. So, this is a very weird idea, and a lot of people were talking about, oh, is there some kind of CBA violation going on there? Is the NHL going to crack down on these teams and be pissed off, etc.? Well, we actually have had a similar situation to this in the past. Remember Brooks Orpik? Yeah, Brooks Orpik. He was with the Penguins for a while. He was with the Capitals for a while. At the end of the 2017-18 season when the Capitals won the Cup, Brooks Orpik had one more year on his contract at $5.5 million AAV. The Capitals weren't in a position where they would have been able to keep that. So what they did was they traded Orpik over to the Colorado Avalanche, where Joe Sackick sat him down and he said, we're going to try to get you another team here. We're going to give you an opportunity to continue to play hockey and eventually continue on. But if we're not able to find you a suitable contender, we will buy you out. They bought him out and the Washington Capitals afterwards signed Orpik once again a month after they traded him to a $1 million contract. And if you do the math, something about the AAV and the money actually being repaid, because when you do get bought out, you still get paid if you're the player. Brooks Orpik was only really losing out on $500,000 a year because of the new contract he got from the Capitals, as well as the Colorado Avalanche still paying him for buying out his contract beforehand. And while there were apparently no repercussions, the NHL wasn't really all too happy to see teams taking advantage of other teams' salary cap structures and using it for their own gain. It's not exactly the same situation, I get that, but it's a very similar vein where one team is using another team's cap space to benefit themselves. We don't usually see things like this happen, where teams kind of close themselves off in a box and benefit mutually there, separately from the entire league, in what appears to be an agreement of some sort. Because this kind of thing is very unique, but it does align with what exactly Iserman was talking about before in his interview that we highlighted in the video talking about the plan in general. That video noted how Iserman wants to go after teams that don't really have all too much cap space, but need more cap space to sign some guys. He didn't say it directly, but he said it by proxy that they were probably just going to take advantage of teams like that. He said he didn't want to say they're taking advantage, but pretty much that's what they're doing by acquiring players from other teams that either cost money and acquiring assets in the process like picks and prospects, or... Something else like what Friedman is hinting at is indeed an alternative where, for example, the Red Wings trade a second round pick to the Tampa Bay Lightning in exchange for the negotiation rights to Mikhail Sergachev. Then they sign him to a contract and then they trade him back to the Lightning with 50% retained salary in exchange for that second round pick that they gave originally, as well as maybe a first or maybe a good prospect or two, maybe a few picks, something like that. So at the end of the day, the Tampa Bay Lightning, they sacrifice some of their future because draft picks, prospects, hey, they're going over to Detroit, but they keep the same players on their lineup from their cup winning team. So it's a symbiotic relationship here because even though Detroit has taken the fall, they're still getting themselves some stuff back. And for the Lightning, even though they're getting their player on a cheaper deal, they're giving up some of their assets. So I'd be really interested in seeing if something like this is actually able to go down. Obviously, if I had to make a bet, if I had to choose myself and say, okay, is it going to happen? I would probably say no because that's a very liberal set of moves here, especially in today's NHL. And while I don't doubt that some of the very low cap teams in the league like Ottawa, like Detroit, like LA, etc. are going to try to make these moves to take advantage of the cap space they do have in the short term while the flat cap is installed. I'm not sure if this very specific idea is one that I would see happening. Obviously, though, if it does, my goodness, that would be absolutely incredible. Seeing Sergachev and Sorelli and Chernak, maybe one, two or three of those all going to Detroit and then 
having Detroit hold a part of their contract for the next few years. That'd be really weird, but if you want to talk to me in the comments about this idea, definitely. I love to hear all that stuff, and I love to read your responses. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. And bye.